Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Mabry's message is titled, Be a Revivalist, Soul Winning Joy. And our musical guest is Josie Lambert. In the midst of his children, the Lord said he would be. It doesn't take very many. It can be just two or three. And I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt oft times before. Surely I can say I've been with my Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings, and I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are real. Thank you, Lord. There's a holy hush around us as God's glory fills this place. I've touched the hem of his garment. I can almost see his face and my heart is overflowing with the fullness of his joy and i know without a doubt that i've been with my lord surely presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this Thank you, Josie Lambert, for that anointed song, Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. And you can order Josie Lambert's uh, DVD of some of her songs. Just call in. We'll be pleased to send it to you. And uh, I want to tell you that surely the Lord's presence is in this place where this television taping is happening. Do you know how I know that for sure? <laughs> because right now I have three intercessors praying. They're praying for me as I give God's word to you, and they're praying for you to be blessed. So, surely the presence of the Lord is here, because we've gathered and we've prayed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he said, where two or more are gathered, there he is. Hallelujah. And besides that, Hebrews 7.25 says, Lord Jesus, 
ever lives to pray for us. So thank you for praying for me, Jesus, and the intercessors and the camera crew. Thank you, Father. So we're covered in prayer. And every Christian out there, you're covered as well. By that word, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think. Oh, that's in Ephesians 3, verse 20. But there again, it says so clearly in Hebrews 7, 25, God is able to do to the uttermost us who come to him through Christ the Lord, whoever lives to pray for us. And so, Savior, thank you for praying for us. Now, this message is, again, about being a revivalist. It's, I'm praying by you, Holy Spirit, you'll stir up God's children to be revived by these messages. It's a series. It's a series, Be a Sent One. And this message is entitled, Soul Winning Joy. <laughs> I know about soul winning joy. One of the intercessors here today, I was honored with leading her to Christ. And that soul winning joy, it's, in fact, several. <laughs> soul winning joy is precious, folks, and I want you to experience it. I, I love for you to experience soul winning joy. And it's God's heart that everyone come to know him through Christ the Lord. Amen? So this message is for, to stir you up to be a soul winner and to stir you up to desire to be a Christian. And if you are a Christian and you're backslidden, you know what? That backslidden road is like trying to walk on broken glass. You get all wounded, bleeding and sore and hurt. Come back to Jesus. Come back to Jesus and realize, backsliders, you have a royal commission. Every Christian that has Jesus Christ as Lord, you have a royal commission as an ambassador of the living Christ. And the royal commission is you are a sent one. As the Father sent Jesus, so Jesus sends us. And as Jesus did what he did by the Holy Spirit, likewise we are to do what we do by the Holy Spirit. Just within the last 24 hours, the Lord has spoken to me. <laughs> because I've been saying to him, a lot of Christians are hurting these days, and if you're hurting, that's sad, and God cares about it, and he knows all about it. And this last year and a half have been a pretty big struggle for me in the ministry, some personal things, family things, ministry concerns, finances, lack of workers, etc. But you know, God, he knows all about it. Many are the trials of a godly person, Psalm 34. But the Lord brings us out of all of them. So he's with us in the trials. And uh, he wants us to know, I'm here. I'm here for you. God is here for you, and he is with us, and he sees it all. But I am believing God for breakthrough anointing. Me and my team, we've done some fasting, and we sure do a lot of praying, and God is on the move. And if you have been going through a big, big, big struggle, just know this, God is on the move. He really is, and he's greater than the needs you have. And he wants you and me to keep trusting him. Keep trusting him. Don't go down by the feelings and the emotions. And back to what he said to me in the last 24 hours. Because I've been saying to the Lord, quite honestly, and he likes it when we talk to him like that, of course. I've been saying, Lord Jesus, you said that we should come to you. We who have labored and heavy laden. And me and your viewers that are going through a lot, we come to you. We have labored and heavy laden. And you said you would give us rest. And you said, Savior, to take your yoke upon us. Help us do that right now together and learn of you. And you said you're meek and humble in heart and we would find rest unto our souls. And your yoke is easy, your burden is light. And so I was talking to the Lord about experiencing that yoke that's easy. And you know what he spoke to me as clearly as I'm talking to you? He said the burden of the ministry is on him. Put the burden on him. Put the burden of your life on him. So, as I was driving over here with my lovely daughter, I, I, and she's here interceding, bless her dear heart, I said to the Lord, the burden of this telecast success and the ministry is on God. Because <laughs> when he said in, in Philippians 4, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we say that verse and then we try and do it in our own strength. The burden is on the Lord. Just give him your cares, give him your burdens, and listen to the rest of this message about being a soul winner and receiving soul winning joy. Amen. Let's get into God's word. When you are soul winning and receiving that joy, 
you're snatching people from the burning. So hear, hear the word in Jude 23. Others save with fear, pulling them out to the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Saving the people from burning. That's what it's all about. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. That's eternal separation from God. Very sad. But the gift of God is life eternal through Christ the Lord. I can't receive the gift for you. You need to receive your gift. Just simply ask Jesus Christ, come in my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior. Tell him, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead because he did. Say, I'm sorry for my sins. Come and be my Lord and be my Savior. And speak with your mouth sincerely, even right now. Just say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Thy confession gets you into heaven. If you confess Jesus Christ as Lord, believe in your heart God rose him from the dead, you are saved. Saved from paying the price of your sins. Don't carry that weight any longer, beloved ones. Be a Christian and then realize that you are a sent one to win others for Christ by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, the good news, which I've just shared in a nutshell, and be a received soul winner's joy. It's so wonderful, soul winner's joy. Thank you, Jesus. Joy comes from bringing in the sheep. Psalms 126, verse 6. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I mean, bringing his converts with him. <laughs> One time I was driving along 49th Avenue in Vancouver, and I was thinking in my thoughts, why do I need a mansion in heaven, Jesus? And I never expected him to answer me. And he did, to my thoughts, clearly as I'm talking to you. And he said, because of all the people you will entertain. <laughs> so I'm sure in the mansion in the heavenlies, <laughs> all the people I've led to Christ will come and we'll be doing some celebrating, maybe having lunch or a banquet supper or whatever. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I want you to experience soul winning joy. Amen leading people to Christ. Thank you, Jesus. So winning, leading people to Jesus, and sharing to people that you've led someone to Christ, it thrills the church. It thrills the people of God. I'd love to hear you phoning in and saying, I led someone to Christ. Share with uh, Pastor Audrey. And that's what thrills the church here by God's word. Acts 15, 3. So being sent on their way by the church, they pass through... Venetia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. <laughs> so you get so many joy, and you thrill the people of God when you win people to Christ. Now, how do you win people to Christ? Tell you the truth. You're trained by Jesus. That's right. He's the Lord Jesus. Help me be a fisher of mankind. Here are Jesus' words. Matthew 4, 19, Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you a fisher of mankind. <laughs> Be a fisher of mankind. Hallelujah. Throw the net of love and bring them in. <laughs> bring in the sheaves. Hallelujah. One thing I encourage you to pray to help in soul winning is Psalm 51, 12, and 13. And that word says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, Lord. Uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. So I, I pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, mighty Savior, that you would have your, the joy of your salvation restored. See, folks, I go back to people having troubles again. It tries to steal your joy. And if you go around like a sad sack, Christian, how are you ever going to win people to Jesus? What are you going to do about that? There's the verse for you. Psalms 51, 12, and 13. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Just keep rolling those cares on God. And keep a trusting and believing, Lord. Do something about it. It's above me, because most things are higher than what we can handle in, in life that are really trying. Like, you and I don't heal someone. 
You and I can't get inside them and fix them up. Those that are addicted to things and downcast and depressed, whatever, that's God's work. What's our work? To pray and trust. Amen? Philippians 4. Rejoice evermore. Don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests unto the Lord. I know it's not easy sometimes to praise God and to feel happy when your soul is downcast with troubles. But one of the secrets, one of the keys I've learned is praise God. See, Isaiah 61 says so clearly, God has given us Christians, besides being sent ones, which, which is really what this message is about, and be a soul winner, receive the joy of that. Isaiah 61 says, God has given us Christians the garment of praise, and it removes heaviness. Well, beloved ones, if we don't exercise the garment of praise that helps heaviness to go, you could be walking in heaviness. Sing a love song to Jesus. Just make it up. It, will, it, it, it works wonders in your life. Because when you're praising him that's almighty, praising him that's greater than your need, it just lifts your heart and puts it more in him. And besides that, Psalm 22 says, God dwells in our praises. So since he dwells in our praises, and you want his presence to lift your hearts, let's praise him more. <laughs> Sometimes I put on praise music, the songs that uh, our team uh, sings uh, out of this little book that I have. And we can send you one until we run out. Beautiful little songs from times past, just little choruses, and they're so good. You know, in him we live and move and have our being, songs like that. And um, I'll, I put the, the CD on and um, sing along with it in, in my humble dining room, where I live in a co-op in Vancouver. I find myself dancing to the Lord. And it's amazing how much of his presence and his joy will come upon you. Just me and Jesus. My husband's usually in the front room watching television. He's 80 now. And, you know, we just need to have joy so we can win the souls and get the soul-winning joy that thrills the church, <laughs> which is what this message is all about. Hallelujah. So we can get trained by Christ. He said, I will teach you. Follow me. So first, follow him. You aren't going to taught how to be a soul winner when you're not following him. <laughs> so daily yield your life to the living God. When you become a Christian, you make a, a decision to have Jesus Christ as Lord, but keep yielding to him. One thing I try to say before I even get right out of bed is, Lord, I submit to my life and day. I resist that devil, he will flee, because he's out there. But by God's word, he has to flee when you say those words, James 4, 7 and 8. I draw near to you, Father, and thank you, you draw near to me. Ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom for the day. And you and Jesus solidify your wonderful union that you have forever and ever. Amen. Do pray for yourself as well as family and friends and situations that we ought to pray for. Because you and I need to be strong to be soul winners. The enemy will try to get it, you don't listen to this message, and you don't get stirred up in your walk with God, and the joy of the Lord, more your strength, be a soul winner that is wise and, and experience that soul winner's joy. The last thing in the, the enemy wants is for you and I to win souls. But it may be the first thing that God wants. God wills that none would perish, but all would receive the gift of life eternal. Be stirred up, Christians. Be stirred up and be soul winners. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes you have to sacrifice personal rights and pleasures to be that soul winner. Let's hear how the apostle said it. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 and 20. Though I'm free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. See, win the more. Be a soul winner. To the Jews I become as a Jew, that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law is under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. But again, Jesus will teach us how to be soul winners. Just pray to be led by the Holy Spirit. He knows what should be said through you and with you. Nehemiah 8.10 is a really good verse to pray. 
And I really believe, as you're listening to my telecasts over the years, I believe in praying God's word. And beloved one, if you're not praying God's word into your life, I can boldly say you're likely not as strong as God wants you to be. <laughs> because the word works effectually in us who believe it. I believe that's in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. It says that, uh, I thank you, Father, I have received your word as it is in truth, the word of God that works effectually in I who believe it. So believe God's word and pray it into your life. So you that are going through a lot, you who need more joy, so you can move about being a soul winner that is wise and receive that extra joy, hear with your hearts this word you can pray. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So you can say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray the joy of the Lord be my strength in a greater way. Amen. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Be wise, win souls. Da Daniel 12, verse 3, I love this verse. <laughs> Here with your hearts, it's so good. Those who are wise shall shine, like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. <laughs> Never mind being a movie star, we all can't be that, but... Let's be a star for Jesus. Let's be about winning souls. Let's be about sharing God's love and the good words of God that get souls saved. It's by the word of God and the Holy Spirit moving through the word, the good news that people get saved. It's really quite simple. For God so loves you, you share that with people. God so loves you, he gave Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, to die on the cross for our sins, that you would not have to carry the weight of them. You could be forgiven, wash whiter than snow in his holy blood supernaturally. And if you ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart to be your Lord and Savior, you will be born of God. If you sincerely confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is my Lord. It's that simple. I encourage you to memorize the scriptures that say those things I've just said. And if you call in and say, I would like those scriptures to lead people to Christ, then we will do so. We will send them to you, I mean. We will send them to you. Very simple. Basically, in a nutshell. John 1, verse 1 and 12 to 14. John 3, 16. And Romans 10, 9 and 10. Those are some basics. Praise God. So winning joy sustained Jesus on the cross. Did you know that? Jesus was on the cross, and to win you and me and give us a gift of life eternal, it sustained him. That soul winning joy and the desire to be soul winning, soul winners sustain us too, precious Father. Hear it from the word of God. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And remember, dear ones, the reaper and the sower get the same reward. You can share with someone God loves you. That's easy enough to do. Not many people turn against those wonderful words. And then someone else can come along and share a little more, and the sower and the reaper gets the same reward. So, Father, I just pray you stir them up in their walk with you through Christ and encourage them to be soul winners that are wise and rejoice. Amen. Praise the Lord for the joy of uh, leading people to Christ. I, I know that joy that I have spoke of in the message. And I'm just believing God that he has stirred you up 
to desire to be part of winning souls. Remember, the sower and the reaper get the same reward. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I just really um, encourage you to know that God has prepared a harvest. He knows who is destined for eternal life, and those ones will want to hear the words of life and truth, the good news of God's love through us. So just be open, and in your personal prayers, do pray that God will give you favor with family. You know, I led about 100 family members to Christ within my first uh, few years as an evangelist, and then someone said to me, you can't lead your own relatives to Christ. I said, pardon me, I already have. <laughs> God wants you to know that he has a plan for your life, and it's a good one. Jeremiah 29, 11 comes to mind. God's thoughts towards you are for good, to give you an expected end. Oh, precious ones, let's expect to be in good health and prosper, even as our soul prospers and come through every trial in God's strength, pure gold. Now, I want to pray for you. I know a lot of you have troubles, and God is greater. Let's call on the greater one. Amen? Let's pray together. Oh, Father, I bow my heart with your, with, uh, my heart with your children that are bowing also. And I humble myself before you and pray with thanksgiving, Father, because you said, don't worry, but pray with thanksgiving and that your peace will guard and keep our hearts and mind. And Father, the people out there in television land, the precious flock, they have needs, I have needs, the ministry has needs, but you're the greater one. I call upon you, Jehovah Jireh, show your power, show your love, meet our needs, Lord God. I pray there be some distinct needs met this very week, that they'd be calling in to say what God has done we love to brag on what you've done, Lord. You're the one that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think. So again, I pray an anointing come upon us that lifts the cares and lifts the burdens. Let our lives be more light in your light, Lord Jesus Christ. You delivered us from darkness, translated us, your children, into the kingdom of light. Encourage and strengthen us, Lord, as only you can. Wrap us in your love now, your sweet presence. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we agree. We say amen together. Amen and amen. Love to hear from you. God bless you. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.